Okay, and welcome back to another segment of Seneca Chemica, where we look at simple demonstrations and experiments for general level high school chemistry or very basic college chemistry. Um, and today we're going to look at emission spectrum. Um, and the easiest way to do that is with spectral tubes. These tubes you can find from any science catalog. Basically, it's a long glass tube that's like a light bulb, like a fluorescent light bulb. Uh, but inside, there are vapors of different elements. So for example, here, this one is hydrogen. And in here, this one is helium. Um, and in here, this one's neon. Of course, you can't tell right now because they're not on. They all look the same. They all look clear. Um, the great thing about these is that they're long and thin. So you get nice bands because you get the light in these nice thin lines. And when they're in these thin lines, you can see what the emission spectrum is clearly as it matches up uh, with lines in a wavelength chart um, or in a spectrum of wavelengths with the color. So to do this, you'll need a diffraction grating. Uh, very easy to find, any science supply store, really just made of cardboard with a diffraction grating in between which is basically a piece of plastic that has a bunch of little tiny uh, cuts or slits in it that you can't even see. But when you put it up to the camera and uh, if you take it outside and just shine it into the sky, you won't see much because it's just one giant blur. Everything is white, so you probably won't see any bands because there's nothing to band, no shapes of bands. Uh, so the best thing to do, what scientists realize, is to get the light into somewhat of a thin slit. So here I have uh, my window and I just close the shade and now there's only a thin uh, bar of light here. Uh, and if I put my diffraction grating, now you'll see, oh, now I can see it. As opposed to when the window's open, you just see kind of blah, like, like, like not, not, nothingness. Uh, so I'm going to close that back. Now again, what you're seeing actually uh, for, for um, a certain element or a certain atom, um, in this case it's from the sunlight, and in the sun plenty of atoms are getting excited from all the energy in there, uh, but this happens a lot all the time. To excite something with heat, I can do it over a flame, um, electricity, which is what I'm going to do today, and the simplest kind, uh, here I have my stove, as you're trying to light a stove, you see a spark. Don't you see that spark? Well, a spark, a spark is just like that. When you hit, take up some, uh, take a piece of metal and just hit it as hard as you can, uh, that energy creates a spark. That is like uh, exactly what we're doing. That energy will excite that metal, um, and those photons can be emitted just from that energy of hitting it. Now, again, in the case of uh, atoms or these elements, what scientists realized was that this is happening a lot. Electron might jump up to the fifth energy level and fall back to the first. Might jump up to the fourth, fall back to the third. Uh, the ones we actually see are only the ones in the visible spectrum. That's known as the Balmer series, named after, you know, Balmer, of course. Um, or, or maybe some other guy, Balmy, I don't know. But anyway, you only see the Balmer series as uh, these electrons drop down, uh, energy is emitted and that corresponds to a wavelength. Some of them actually are in the UV range, some of them are in uh, the infrared range. You, you can't see them, you can only see the visible ones. The ones in the visible light spectrum range around 400 nanometers, purple to 700 nanometers red. That's typically what the human eye can see. Uh, that is known as the Balmer series. Uh, so let's get to it. Let's go see some emission spectrum in the Balmer series. Here's a fluorescent bulb. That's what it looks like with a diffraction grating. Here's an LED bulb. Almost the same thing. You can see almost every color. And the diffraction grating makes the bands look like the shape of the bulb. So if your bulb is round, you'll get these round spots. Here, if you view my doorway, you'll get a doorway-shaped bands from this. So again, because this is basically sunlight, you see the full spectrum. Nothing really missing here. Basically see every color. Here's the stairwell up to the top. You can see there is definitely light coming from there. And you can see a little bit in diffraction grating uh, some bands of light just from that. That will definitely interfere with your results. So close the door, do it at night, go in a closet, do whatever you have to. Make sure the room is completely dark. Have the fixture set up, plugged in, 
and the first one is hydrogen. And first I'll show you what it looks like just to the naked eye, uh, its overall composite color. Then I'll put the diffraction grating in front of it for each one, and you will see the lines uh, emitted of the emission spectrum. Okay, again, the darker the better, and let's go ahead and look at our first one, hydrogen. All right, so this is hydrogen, naked eye, no diffraction grating yet. Here we go with the diffraction grating. Okay, and here it is with the diffraction grating. Again, all you do is I'm um, slipping this right in front of the camera. You can see there it is, the spectral lines. And it repeats it a couple times, but here it is for one of them. And you're focusing on those really bright lines. So you can see two of them, very bright, a red one and a turquoise one. Uh, the violet one is not as easy to see. But this is characteristic of hydrogen. Classic experiment uh, done by early scientists uh, such as Niels Bohr. And he studied the element hydrogen, and this is characteristic of hydrogen, those three bright lines in the emission spectrum. You can see on this side, it's a really bright red one. You can see that turquoise one and a purple one all the way on the left. Okay, here we have helium. Helium, uh, let me get this better focus here. This is without the diffraction grating. Now here we go with the diffraction grating. You can see the line pattern is different, very different. Spectral lines emitted by helium is very different from that of hydrogen. Let me zoom in here. There we go. You can see there's a red line, a yellowish line, two greens, two blues, very different from hydrogen. Of course, helium has two electrons, not just one like hydrogen. This is very useful for astronomers. They might be staring at a star uh, trillions and trillions of miles away. How do they know what it's made of? Well, the light coming from it, they can analyze the emission spectrum through a telescope or something, and if they get lines like this, oh, it's mainly helium. If they get lines like the one you saw before, well, that star is probably made of hydrogen. Again, all I'm doing here is sticking the diffraction grating right in front of the camera, and these spectral lines come out. What it's doing is it is dividing up the composite light that's coming through this. This light is made of actually many colors, many different kinds of photons, many different frequencies, and diffraction grating splits it up by frequency. Things of long wavelength, like red, actually bend the most and go farther to the side. Things of a shorter wavelength or higher frequency, such as purple, don't bend as much, don't diffract as much and they don't go out as much, and it splits up the rainbow, basically. So this is great, you might be learning this in chemistry, you might be learning this in physics, great for both, go science. Okay, one more here, this is probably my favorite. Whoa! Just like the signs at the local bar, neon, here we have neon, and neon, you can see the composite color uh, to the naked eye, it's very different, very red, very bright like an advertising sign back in the, you know, 1970s. Um, and here we are with the diffraction grating. So if it looks so red, it's probably emitting many red photons, photons near the red wavelength. So let's take a look and you'll see, whoa. So as you can see here, let me zoom in on that. There are very few lines in the blue and purple. There are a few very faint, you can barely see them because the other ones are so bright. So many lines in the red wavelength, orange wavelength, yellow wavelength area. You can see a little faint green one there. Okay, again, this is the element neon. And scientists use this to analyze what an element is, uh, but also learn about its electron structure and electron configuration. You may have heard of the Bohr atom, the Bohr model. So this helped prove that Electrons are arranged in specific shells, specific energy levels or rings. So you get this specific band color as these electrons are excited, in this case by the electricity of this fixture. The electrons are excited, they jump up to a higher level, and as they come back down, they re-release that energy in the form of a photon. 
And if they were not organized into quantized uh, locations, you would just get a blur of stuff. You would get different colors all the time. Different elements might not uh, give you a unique pattern. Uh, but because they are quantized, you get a specific frequency for each photon that's doing this. And that corresponds to one band. So if there are many electrons jumping up and down, um, as they go from one level to another, it gives you one specific frequency. And in this case, neon has a bunch of them because, of course, neon does have many electrons, 20 electrons. I'm sorry, 10 electrons. Neon does have 10 electrons. Okay, so there you have it. Again, I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, again, for a basic chemistry teacher or chemistry student, an easy demo that you can do. You can definitely get these types of tubes in this picture at any science store. They're called spectral tubes or maybe ionized gas tubes. Um, kind of like a cathode ray tube, uh, what J.J. Thompson used, but these are not um, evacuated. These, these have an element in them. They have a vaporized gaseous element in them, uh, not a vacuum inside. But same kind of idea um, to see the color as they are energized. Um, and these are old. These are maybe uh, 20, 30 years old, but they still work and you still get the job done. Uh, the light that came through was not as clean. Um, but again, just go in a dark room. I used to do this at uh, in my classroom with windows in the background. It still worked, um, but just do your best and you can teach the kids a lot about atomic chemistry and the nature of the atom. All right. Thanks for watching.